Well, howdy. Well, I'm conducting a little bit of a gunsmithing here. Let me show you what, what's happening. This is my, my custom-made uh, black powder uh, target pistol. And I took the, uh, the right-hand grip off so that I could more easily clamp it in this machinist vise. Now, let me get a small enough pick to show you what's going on. Okay, when you pull the trigger, it moves this bar here down, but it only moves it just that little bit, okay? Now, when that happens, a spring, and it's a spring about this size, I don't know if it's that one, that one, I have, I'll show you, I have a number of them here, and I've got some clippers just in case I can trim back one, because I'm doing this as a sort of a trial and error thing. Now, as to the sear, it fits. Let's see if I can do this. Well, this this is this is a, a mistaken one that I made, so I'll do it upside down so you can see. It goes right in here like this. Ignore that little hole in the top because that's uh, it's upside down. If you look inside the frame itself, let me get this out of the way now. If you look inside the frame itself, you will notice a hole down here. That is a place to set the spring, like that. Now, the length of this spring, I don't know exactly. Well, like I said, I've made about seven or eight sears trying to get this right. And this is my latest attempt, and I think it's the one that will work. It's only slotted on one side, and it's got this little tit on the bottom. And that's the whole, the whole idea behind that, is to fit inside the end of the spring. Well, this spring is far too long. Let me get this out of here, you piece of junk. It's far too long, but, it's, but it, it does as an example of, of, of what I'm doing. It fits like this into the spring, sits like this, and then uh, sits in the, uh, uh, this, in, this engagement forks here which are connected to this part here, which is connected to the spring via this. The spring in here is basically the trigger spring. And it shoots the, the sear up or down into the barrel through this hole. And what that does, as, the, as this moves in and out, uh, this is held by that by the sear coming through. Pull the trigger and the spring pushes it forward into the nipple which sits right here. And speaking of nipples, uh, this is a modern nipple and this is the one that came out of it. You'll notice the, the threads are quite a bit different. Uh, that threw me for a loop at first until I realized this is a much earlier, like 19th century or European or something like that standard. Excuse me. <laughs> Damned allergies. Like a standard thread of, of a different different type. I don't know if that, that threading is, is metric. I don't know if it's wet. I have no idea what it is, but it's, uh, it's older. Anyway, once this is all lined up, oops, sorry. Uh, where is it? You put it all together with this screw, and uh, it should work. Knock on wood. Now, the problem at the moment is the spring. And I'm doing a trial and error. <clears throat> problem is, is that the sear that was in here before was not quite uh, up to snuff, because it stuck up a little bit, but not enough. And when it stuck up, it, it would catch this this lip here, but it wouldn't catch it. Well, when you pulled it, it would it would drop and, and it would go, but it would drop on its own very easily. I'm trying to put it about a millimeter higher so that uh, this thing will, will go, but only when you pull the trigger, but not a hair trigger, but rather a, a little bit more, say, say maybe uh, two or three pounds at least. You know, I, I, I don't think it needs to be 10 pounds or 8 pounds or something, but not 2 or 3 ounces 
I mean, the guy who had this set up before, you whisper on it and it would it would snap the, the thing shut. I, I, it was just too dangerous to load. I've only shot this once successfully and shot, a, there's been a second discharge because the uh, that sear let loose and uh, fortunately it was pointed down range and it went kabang. I didn't want that. So anyway, I'm... Uh, I've discovered that you need a third hand if you're working on something like this, and this, this little site, little vise is just wonderful for it. Anyway, what I'm doing is, is cutting springs. I started out really, really short. Oops, well, forget that. It didn't work anyway. And then I went a little bit longer. And then I'm going, well, well, this was another shorty that I tried. Uh, and these springs are, are various uh, tensions, various uh, lengths, you know, various everything you can think of. I'm thinking it's about that size. I think that's about the right size. So anyway, I'm going to be tinkering on this. I, I brought it in from the shop in here to my man cave because it's warm in here. It's bloody freezing cold out in the shop at the moment. And I just this is just such delicate work that I'm hoping I can do it in here without uh, the thing going scabroing on me. And my shop has a typical floor full of crud. And uh, I, I have enough crud in, in black powder guns to begin with. Matter of fact, I got this uh, made by Track of the Wolf, by the way, this thing. Uh, it's actually for my flintlock <clears throat> for cleaning out the, uh, the touch hole. But it's great for cleaning out, um, where is it? For cleaning out uh, uh, nipples too, you you know you can run it inside and run it through here, and and clean it. And there's another example that this that must be the new one. Here's the old one. If you run it from here, this one it goes all the way through. That one it doesn't. Much bigger hole. Anyway, wish me luck. This is what I'm working on.